Absolutely an Edison truck can come with train horns. When I mean train horns, I don't mean the kind you can buy at a truck stop. I mean train horn train horns like off of a CN locomotive. But the subject of train horns really brings me to an overlooked Canadian inventor, Robert Swanson. So I got to tell you the story of this guy. Here's a real Canadian hero himself, Robert Swanson. Not only did he work as a locomotive engineer hauling logs, he traveled around from logging camp to logging clamp, collecting their stories and writing poetry back in the day. Much as Robert Service did for the miners in the Klondike, old Robert Swanson did for the loggers on the west coast of Canada. We have a lot of the stories and heritage and legends of the loggers because of this guy. Well, old Mr. Swanson believed that the freight train was a symbol of Canada. Because you got to remember back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the freight train coming to a town was a symbol of economic progress. It's what connected Canada from coast to coast. It was a major driving force back before truckers ever came along. And he believed that that horn that sounded in a prairie town or a remote town in BC, when they heard that freight train coming or that passenger train, they heard that lonesome whistle blowing, they knew that was a symbol of Canada in his eyes. Well, he devoted most of his time to uh, perfecting how that train horn was going to sound. He needed the right notes. He said it needed to be musical, like a bird singing in the forest is how a freight train should sound. And for safety, you should be able to hear that thing three, five miles away coming. But he didn't want an obnoxious horn that was going to annoy people. He wanted it to sound musical and whimsical, like a canary yelling at you from five miles. So after getting run out of town by the cops for blowing horns in the middle of town, he said, I went out way out into the bush on a crown land lease and set out this whistle farm where he could literally perfect the sound, pitch, and volume of train horns. Like, that is dedication. Hell, he was the first person to mount train horns to his car. And yes, it went exactly how you would expect. He, he did the same thing I would do. He blew it in the middle of BC ferries, and the RCMP impounded his train horns. Like, I would do the same thing. Train horns are sweet, even in an enclosed place like a ferry. Not only did he dedicate his time traveling around preserving the history of loggers on the west coast, but he's also the man to thank for the preservation of the Royal Hudson Steam Locomotive. See, back in 1939, the King of England rode all the way from Quebec out to Vancouver on this train, was so impressed with Canada, and that steam locomotive is a symbol of our country, that they actually named it Royal, and that's why you see the crowns on it. So yeah, you can thank Robert Swanson for preserving this and not letting it go to scrap. In my eyes, Robert Swanson is a Canadian hero that is often overlooked. So after his dedication to the logging industry, transport, railway preservation, history, and making that level of passion to make these horns sound great, I'm going to try and make sure every Edison Motors truck has a Robert Swanson train horn on it. Not sure if it's legal, but these are sweet. Please go check out the YouTube, Robert Swanson's Whistle Farm, for more information.